So, um, so I would like to introduce myself. My name is Suyi. I'm very, very happy to be your host today. And uh, if let's say you find that there's any technical issues or there's any, uh, you can't hear us or you think that we are too loud, you wanted, you wanted us to vo uh, soften our voice, let us know. But we will, we will only increase our voice, okay? Yeah, so <laughs> Get your body. <laughs> Uh, decrease our voice yeah so uh today we have our guest speaker so our guest uh main who is uh from community e-call market so uh she will give uh i was eh, she will give us a brief introduction about herself and also basically her role at cm yeah so welcome main to give her a virtual clap <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Sui. Thank you for all the hard work and all the people behind Zero Waste for all your hard work to get this going. And think uh, since May, I didn't realize the Jones Zero Waste community. So you guys are you guys really rock for all the effort that you're doing, and you're not doing it alone. As I know, you know, you have a team of people behind. So it's really amazing. Um, okay, I, I, I'm, I, my name is Ming. I'm a volunteer with uh, CEM. I started, um, I actually got connected, or rather I found CEM in 2014. And okay. then, uh, yeah, at that time I was like looking, I, I quit my corporate world job and I was looking for, um, I was looking for uh, safe food. And mm. I realized that when I went to the supermarket out, I looked at the, organic product range. Then I realized they more or less are the same, um, mm -hmm. just that they have different labels. And um, I actually uh, don't know any of them. So I realized, yeah, for the food that I'm taking every day, I actually don't know who these people are. So I went on a quest to look for, you know, uh, where food are, how, how you actually produce food and all that kind of thing. And I found CM. So, and mm -hmm. I found their concept, the intent, their mission uh, was very noble. And mm -hmm. so since then, I've actually spent some time uh, helping, uh, helping them out. So in the initial stage, getting more like social media, getting connected, you know, creating Facebook and all that kind of thing. Uh, not that I'm very savvy, it's just that, you know, <laughs> yeah. So you have one person dedicated to look at things like this. Right yeah. now, yeah, right now it's more on um, seeing things at the project level, like like, ah, okay. uh, like things like MCO is a project, like uh, ah. a lot of product offerings, all these are projects, you know. So basically uh, right now I'm coordinating projects and running projects for, for CM. Like a main project coordinator at CM. Mm, yeah. I see. All right. Mm, so okay. I guess uh, everyone is wondering about uh, the today topic. So today topic is the... Um, it's all about community supported agriculture in short form CSA, which Ling will be explaining what is a CSA uh, all about, and also we will be learning about uh, we will be learning about CSA in general <laughs> from, Ling, from uh, oh. community market, and also a lot a lot of good points and uh, some of the misconception about organic produce or misconception about expiry date that you are seeing on the market shelf. So uh, right now, can we have a brief explanation about like what is actually a community supported agriculture? Yeah, and also how does it related to CEM? It's I think yeah. See, in fact, CEM is also one of the CSA model, right? Yeah, correct. Um, there there are many kinds of. I mean, generally for CSA is is in short for community supported agriculture, and usually it applies to organic uh, uh, farming because uh, that is where you actually need the community to support you. So what happens is that usually what uh, the, the farmers will produce and the, if for anyone that's, um, that has uh, put your hands down into farming and all that, or, or rather get connected, you know how much time is needed to do farming. So that doesn't leave a lot of time for marketing for you know things like you need to send produce you need to sell to people and all that kind of thing that's where the communities come in and um, they kind of like take whatever produce from the farm and then they will they will uh they will dis uh, disperse it themselves i mean they will uh distribute it within themselves now um cm is a similar model except that mm. uh, we uh rather than just one farm 
we have a mix. We have uh, we go we have uh, a mixture of a uh, few farms. So in the ah. initial stage, yeah, in the initial stage when uh, the founders, the CM founders, they actually went to all these farmers and asked if they would like to join this program. This program is actually the the concept was actually mooted by Mr. Gan from GK. Um, GK Organic Farm, GK Organic, you can, Farm. GK Organic Farm, the founder of GK Organic Farm. When he went to Japan uh, about 10, many, many years ago, he 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 saw the Teke system in Japan. The mm. Teke system, which is where um, in those days, they, the, the mummy group, they were very concerned about the food that the children were taking, also because of the radiation and all that. And they were very, um, they were very, supportive of the farmers the local farmers that are actually farming for you know this kind of good good quality and uh, uh, ethical food so they got together and uh, and they told the farmers like just focus on farming and we will dish, do the distribution ourselves so this group mm -hmm. of mummy started you know supporting the groups and this decade system eventually um, uh, um, increased into different uh, states, different prefectures and all that, and eventually became the, um, um, the essential uh, growth for organic industry in Japan. They were like one of the factors that created, that, that actually um, increased, that actually supported the organic growth in Japan. So Mr. Gan saw this model and came back and then talked to the founders of CM. They were originally three founders and um, they, he sold that idea and these uh, being young men those in those days, they were like, um, you know, very uh, passionate, very old. <laughs> yeah, very old, you know, kind of thing. So they started doing this um, uh, in, the, in that way. And so they made a road there and, and they actually went to all the local organic farmers and asked if they would participate. And there were a few, there were many, you know, who eventually participated. Mm -hmm. Right. And not just organic farmers, they also went to producers, food producers, oh. like mm -hmm. rice, you know, noodles. Ah, you know, those oh. dry food. Those dry foods. So they actually went on food from end to end. That means from dry goods to vegetables. And so then that's how they got participative in that program. So that is on the producer side. Then on the customer side, they sold this idea. That means they tell them that we no longer sell vegetables in packets, you know? Mm. You have to sign up for the subscription model where you get the vegetables in a box on a weekly basis. So in it, maybe you will have 10 to 12 kind of vegetables, but they no longer, they no longer are in the, in the package, in the plastic bags. And, um, and you will, and in the package, it will be what the farm produce rather than you going into the shelf and then picking, picking you know. Picking what, so, whatever yeah, you uh, And there's always a rush. There's always a, like um, people going in and then choosing the best and then, you know, leaving all the ugly ones behind. So there were mm -hmm. this kind of, in those days, you know, that, 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 that concept of, you know, how, you know, I have to come very early, pick all the nice vegetables and then, you know, and, and that's how. Ah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's this how you got the freshest uh, produce. Yeah, it's freshest. You are but, but yeah, so but this this method, the, the this method, all the vegetables are fresh and it goes into the box. From mm. the farmer to the packer to the box and goes to you. Mm. So there's no one touching the vegetables, no one going pressing and then check whether they're fresh or not. There's no no no, no more such kind of thing already. Ah uh, yeah. I never think of think of this benefit because like uh if let's say you go to like pasta you worry that people touch here touch there press this press that but yeah. like if you, let's say you subscribe to a veggie box you will be able to get the vegetables that guarantee fresh because there is no one touching uh except the the farmers and also the volunteers yeah yeah ah yeah yeah so, yeah i think yeah it's quite a so good. so so they, they sold this kind of idea to the, the assistant customers Mm -hmm. um, but as in all things new and all things that require change, uh, not many people accepted this idea. So I think there were only like six people who signed up for the veggie box out of the 
80, 100 customers that they have. So oh, that in was the of the in the beginning. So, um, yeah, so that that is CM. But for CSA to work, I wanted to mention there are two very critical factors. One mm -hmm. is a high level of acceptance from the consumers. Yeah. Because uh, what you're getting in the box is actually what the farm has to us. So they may be ugly, they may they will have holes, they may come with little creatures, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sometimes yeah, snails. And sometimes the condition of the weather condition, the circumstances, some of the vegetables may not turn out to be what we expected. Like some people will like comment, "Hey, how come the cucumber this season is a bit bitter?" Mm. Um, so these kind of things happens. But um, you have to understand that this is where the acceptance level comes in because this is not something that the farmer can control. I mean, organic farmer can control. In organic farmer, you can control a lot of things. So organic farmer will depend on the soil condition, the weather and all that kind of thing to farm, to, to actually produce. And sometimes you may not even get the produce that you intend to farm. So um, for, for, for things to go into the box, there's actually a lot, a lot, a lot of work at the back, which we don't see, which we are increasingly not seeing, right? So mm. the high level of acceptance for people to accept what is in the box, it's, it's very high. It needs, it needs a very high level of tolerance. Second thing is um, the, the level of trust. Mm. Because... Uh, we get a lot of this kind of question. How do I know your vegetables are organic? Because they're not certified. I don't have a piece of paper to certify them. For a small time farmer, for them to get that piece of paper, um, they frequently do not have that kind of resources to handle that kind of certification. Yeah. So, yeah, so you have to rely on people like, uh, like CM. You, you have to trust people like CM that we are doing our job. Like I know since the beginning when I, when I, when I went into, when I, when I found CM, I actually joined them for field trips. I go to farms. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually meet the farmers. And most of the time we ask this question, why do you want to do organic? You know, because it's yeah. not easy. Who in the right mind would want to do organic when you know that what you farm may not, equal to you know what you get at the end of the day and there's so much effort you know about input and output right so much input to get that amount of output that doesn't justify so primarily the level of trust that's uh, the csa is doing their job the level of trust to the farmer that they will continue to farm so that is that is the very important about a csa program Mm, I see, I see. Thanks for sharing the two critical factors. The one uh, maybe I would like to uh, also elaborate again is the high levels of acceptance from the consumers. And the second will also be the, uh, the level of trust uh, from the consumers towards the producer or towards the uh, farmers. Yeah, so I think it's a, it's a very great, uh, I mean, it's a very, very good introduction about how uh, the whole CSA models looks like and also the challenges behind so that we all actually as a consumer here also know about and also learn the hard work behind. Yeah, so I guess also because I know that this movement uh, is uh, started since 2012, right? Uh, just mm -hmm. now we had a meeting with Ming, so I study a bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And then it's all about the better of uh, better planning of resources on how to make this whole model as sustainable as we could and then something that we really uh, i mean for zero waste malaysia that uh, we are very very grateful about and also uh, amazed from the whole effort behind is the concept of refill and uh, refill and uh, refill and recycle concept which uh, you emphasize on your cover for on your cover photo on your facebook page so if let's say any of you who do not know cm do check out their Facebook page, community.econ. Eh? Community. <laughs> Eco Market. Eco Market team. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So perhaps, uh, Ming, you could share about uh, what, what's the reason behind the refill and recycle concept and why you do that and why you, uh, why CM do this 
and also uh, how you actually implement this. Yeah. Okay, I have a joke that I always tell people. Uh. <laughs> what uh, joke? This is about Mr. Yap. <laughs> okay, just oh, now. Okay. I, I, Mr. Yap, Aurora, <laughs> Superman, huh? Uh, Aurora's favorite. <laughs> Aurora's uh. favorite uh, idol. <laughs> okay. Um, originally, I mentioned there are three founders, right? Over time, when they switch to this concept, uh, only one founder left, mm. which is Mr. Yap. So he's the sole so, so guy that's running this right now. Yeah. So uh, why did he do this? Why, why, mm -hmm. why, why is he doing this? You know, Because yeah. it's a lot of work. I've seen, because I've joined him in the initial stage from going to the farm to the actual delivery to the pickup points to the customers. Mm -hmm. To handling all the complaints, you know, all the, 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 the. I, I've seen the whole, and this is one guy doing it. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. So um, he keep he always tell me that he needs to find a successor. So um, I tell him, yeah, your successor a bit difficult. <laughs> you need to bring, <laughs> you need to bring the potential to the, the of. The, the potential successor to the place where you got struck by the lightning and then so that the same lightning will strike the successor and then will continue your work because it is not easy to do this job and he is one person who is doing packing who is doing uh, uh, picking up the vegetables from the farms mm -hmm. okay some some sends the farm over some send the vegetables over but some goes to some pickup point that he has to go all over in clan valley to pick it up sending the vegetables to the pickup points you know mm -hmm. uh plus a lot 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 more of other works and customers handling you know customer servicing and all this kind of thing so um which is why you understand that only only a person with such mission and such passion for this entire concept he can sustain himself you know so mm -hmm. uh in terms of in terms of the concept which he believes that this is the way uh, a shift in consumer behavior Mm -hmm. can lead to a change in the environment. Even mm -hmm. in those days, we, they've already seen the, the patterns, the, the plastic waste, you know, the global warming. All these are all, all the symptoms that already show if we continue to consume the same way, uh, there is only, we, there's no way the earth can continue to support us, mm -hmm. you know. So, which is why they made that decision to do on the refill. Because uh, there's a Chinese saying that uh, uh, that means it's everyone's responsibility to protect the environment, to protect mm -hmm. the planet. Mm -hmm. And how do we do it? We do it starting from home. Because that's where the most of the consumption is. You know, yeah. from everything that you buy in your entire home, everything is, uh, you have a choice of how you want, whether it's ecologically uh, safe or ecologically supportive, you know. Yeah, and it's something, uh, it's doable and easily manageable at a individual level, yeah, which is yeah, very, correct. very important. Yeah, correct. so I guess it's a, I mean, Miss, I mean, we are very very surprised with like Mr. Yap, uh, one man show. But I am so grateful that he also has a group of uh, volunteers that is also helping him, supporting him in terms of like, uh, being able to mobilize, especially during the MCO period, which is a super super. I mean, it's a it's a it's a very big uh, volunteer effort. Yeah, but it's uh, we talk about the veggie box, right? Could you also? I mean. From your background, we already can see the veggie box on your <laughs> beside you. So maybe you could also share uh, more about the veggie box and also, uh, yeah. So we go for veggie box first, and then before we jump into dry grocery, yeah. Okay. So the veggie box um, originally we have a subscription model, which is mm -hmm. like you can subscribe for a monthly, uh, monthly more monthly commitment, or yeah. half yearly, or even a yearly commitment. 
<laughs> now, the one I want to share about this uh, monthly and half yearly. And monthly, I think we know because um, we originally you were try out with a trial box. After a trial box, and you realize, hey, you know, um, I I can do this. You know, I I can accept this, and then people move to a monthly model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From a monthly model, um, you can actually go further. You can actually go to a semi-annual or an annual model. Uh, you will get the, it will be even cheaper because you are committing to a longer run. Mm -hmm. You know, your price of the vegetables will be even cheaper. Mm -hmm. But most importantly on an annual and semi-annual uh, model is that you are committing to the farmer and say, hey, I am committing to you for half a year and a year. Mm -hmm. Continue to do your farming. Don't give up. Continue to farm these kind of yummy, delicious vegetables for us. We appreciate your effort. Yeah. That is your message that you are sending to the farmers mm -hmm. by doing yeah. this, you know? Yes. Right. So on a on a monthly on a monthly model, uh, what you get is you get uh, uh, vegetables on a weekly basis. So we have a pickup model, and since MCO, we also have a home delivery model, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. um, you get you get twelve kinds of vegetables. Now I wouldn't what say we are of vegetables. Ten, is, uh, ten, size A or size B. Size A and uh, B. Okay, A is a small box. Yeah. B is a big box. So mm -hmm. A is uh, more suitable for a family of one to three person. But actually it depends. I realize with the MCO, actually everybody has a different consume, consume consumption pattern. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, <laughs> so <laughs> you already mentioned about the price. But uh, Aura, please let us to explain uh, what is uh, how many types of vegetables that we have in this uh, thirty ringgit uh, boxes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so for 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 both, we have ten to twelve kind of vegetables. 10 to 12. The difference, yeah, the difference between the uh, small box and the large box is the um uh the the. The weight and mm -hmm. then the, the number of people that it, it actually caters to. So small box is more suitable for a small family of one to three, which is um, 33 ringgit for a weekly box and 30 ringgit when you jump to a monthly model. Yeah. So whereas a large box will be suitable for a family of maybe uh, three if you are a heavy veggie eater to maybe about five, I would say. So ah. the so the ones behind me is actually uh, all the ones that you're seeing on the Facebook right now is actually a uh, size A, eh, size it's B. It's a size B. It's a size B. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um and and the benefit of having a few oh I have a little crawly here. Ah. <laughs> the benefit <laughs> the benefit of having a, uh, a a a few farmers in the program is that you get a mix of vegetables. Rather yeah. than uh, you get highland vegetables, usually some highland vegetables you can't get the lowland vegetables. But this one you get get a bit of the highland and lowland vegetables. So and we kind of like our uh, brother Mr. Yap and the founders in the original uh, stage. Mm -hmm. Well, last time I got the thin leg. What a bonus, <laughs> law. <laughs> This, this one has the extra, okay, Aurora. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll explain this one. I, I need, I need to. So yeah, I need to explain this one now because later, <laughs> because later people will have a misconception. <laughs> 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 she she created, she create another <laughs> problem for us. Create another. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Back to the uh, size B vegetable box. Yeah. So yeah. So we get a mix of uh, the highland and lowland vegetables. And low and low yeah. So you get uh, and and their formula that they've already created earlier on, they kind of like segregated to give you a mix of everything. Like you have uh, tubers, you have roots, you have gourds, you know, mm. and um, carrots, the root vegetables, and then some. These are like um, ginger uh, spices. Yeah, spices to help to to do cooking. Yeah. So mm. that in within this box is actually. Um, I would say complete that you can actually make meals for your entire family. So we yeah. have our uh, cabbages, we have also tofu, 
and then uh, a different kind of vegetables, some like the pucho ubi, which is uh, which is from the lowland, and then spinach, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but this is not all cast in stone. It depends on what's the harvest for that week. Like, uh, you know, we also have uh, tomatoes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but we try. They they put in a lot of effort to mm, actually yeah, I can make see you. That, like, yeah. To, yeah. The, there are a lot of thoughts too. behind it why you know the combination is like this and all that so for people who that this works is actually to them they appreciate the, the, the thoughts behind it and all that mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i can feel the uh the vegetable uh, each of the vegetable box that delivered are uh, like uh, uh per week are all um carefully thought they try to come with like different varieties like what you say we have like uh, lowland uh, producers and also highland producers so it won't be too boring but at the same time also i think it's a very very important mindset that uh consumer as a conscious consumer we also need to know uh, we also need to understand that um we actually eat uh, we actually consume what is growing at that period of time and maybe it's it's going to be like a week for you to consume um, the whole month of bayam because that's the, I mean, that's... Reality. The, Reality. Yeah, if let's say that's you are a farmer yourself, when you actually plant something, you don't always change your crop every week because every crop, they take few months to actually get ready to harvest. So that's a lot of people have this uh, misconceptions about, ah, uh, okay, it's, tapioca again <laughs> how many times i need to have tapioca but it's 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 i mean it's a it's a it's a it's a joy of uh, farming and also i think be, uh, especially during this mco period people just get creative if let's say they have this tapioca for the whole month yeah actually you can you can try different recipe because it you can be versatile like cooking can be very very versatile yeah so i think it's a very good uh, i mean um, very good introductions about the veggie box, but uh, also an important thing is that uh, if let's say any audience who would be very interested to also subscribe for this veggie box, how do they subscribe? Are they going to go to your page or who they are, who are they going to contact? Yeah, etc. Okay, um, they have they can go to our page, send us an inbox, send us a PM. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we will direct them because if they are looking for a home delivery model, then we will direct them to the ranges. If they're looking for a monthly model, then we would uh, let them know. Um, let, <laughs> let them know. <laughs> let them know uh, which is the nearest pickup point that works for them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. those information we have to like kind of like get the groundwork set. Uh, uh, establish before we actually direct them to, to mm. the process. Mm. Yeah, so I guess it's very direct. So if let's say anyone who is very interested to subscribe for Veggie Box, um, just need to go to their Facebook page, Community Eco Farm Market C E M to PM them. If let's say you are very interested, so basically they have size A and size B. Size A is a small one which is suitable for one to three people, and also for size B. Uh, uh, ah, yeah, size B is more suitable <laughs> for more than three people. Yeah. Yep, yep. And size A is 30 ringgit if let's say you subscribe for a month and 33 ringgit for a week, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And also aside from veggie box, right? I believe that a lot of people are not also not really aware that you also cover dry groceries. So usually for dry grocery, uh like what kind of dry grocery range that you cover from CEM? Okay, we have maybe um for the grocery maybe the question to ask the yeah. most usually people when they start on organic vegetables they kind of like um it's because of the health they, they want to look at um they want to focus uh, on their health and yeah. um and uh yeah and also try to eliminate some chemical out of their diet and all that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and the one thing i want to emphasize it don't don't switch to organic because uh, of some illness it has to be you know you have to build up your own body it's not like you know the moment you are ill or some illness has um have in, in, in uh, uh, stricken in, in your family or, or things like that then only you start 
thinking about a change, it should be because um, you know you you want to start build up your health at this point yeah. in time. So then then uh, the question came as in like uh, you have organic vegetables, but what about the seasoning? What about the rice that is your staple diet and all that kind of thing? Yeah. How, where do you, you know you, you, you how where what how do you how do you how do you handle those because those things also have plenty of chemical mm -hmm. um, they have fungicides you know to preserve them they have lots of preservative and all that kind of thing so so yeah so then cn went on a so then went on offering to include all these dry groceries as part of the program as well mm -hmm. so you ask me what is it in the program basically it covers in uh if i can say in chinese is Cai mi you yen jiang chu cha. Ah, it's basically yeah. everything in your house. Yeah, yeah the staple in your household. Because mm. as as I said, if you want to change, if you want to reduce um, plastics, where do you start? You start from your household. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we have rice. Oh, it's so heavy. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so yeah, oil. Show you. Um, yeah, so basically for everyone who is interested on dry grocery, CEM also do um, provide refillable concept which before before MCM, you can actually uh, buy uh, from them and refill, uh, refill, refill at your place as well, right? Before refill at the space and also we have refill at the pickup point where you actually bring your containers, label them with your name and what, uh, what product that you, are, you, you want it to contain. And then you bring it to the pickup point when you bring ah, back your you veggie box, up. and then you pick yes. up the next week. Ah, so that's it. that's how the model works. Because yeah. we we what we are saying is that this is your container. This is what you 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 be using. So you are responsible for your own container for the cleanliness mm -hmm. and for all that kind of thing. So um, everyone takes care of their own container rather than. Uh, you know, we at the packing center, we will just like, because people who donate the containers to us, then we will just refill. Yeah. If, you know, you, you uh, it's actually better that you actually uh, 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 dedicate a container for that each of your ingredients. I think it's nice that because it seems like uh, you, you are giving the opportunities to delegate to the consumer to form a partnership between the producers and consumers. So you Correct. actually provide your own container and then I refill to you and then you take care of your own container. You take your ownership and I can reduce the waste. You can reduce your uh, unnecessary packaging as well. Exactly. Yeah, and and, and also this is, this is what community is all about. Community is not just about the producer, about CEM. It's also yeah. about the consumer. That's where yeah. the tree... The triangle, you know, uh, relationship yeah. happens, and yeah. one of the one of the items that I particularly want two items I want to particularly mention is mm -hmm. the first one is rice. Mm -hmm. Rice is our staple food for most yeah. people, uh, mm -hmm. unless you're on a specific diet. Unless you are like Angmo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you know that we cannot get rice? organic rice in Malaysia. This um, is a, this is a major alarm for food security. Because we know the largest organic uh, rice producer uh, went I back uh, in Malaysia, actually closed down uh, five or six years ago. Oh, you mean the the largest rice uh, farmers organic in rice for in organic peninsula rice. in peninsula Malaysia in peninsula. Of course, we have barrio and all that right so now there from no Sabah Sarah. Organic rice uh, producer in peninsula Malaysia. You have smaller ones that not but the that, one that is not commercial. The largest, yeah, the largest rice. organic uh, rice producers. So right now we are getting our rice from Thailand or India. This particular range is from India. Okay. Ah, and we went to the, um, uh, uh, the Malaysia one, uh, the peninsula closed down six. Because they, it takes a lot of effort to, to do this. And, uh -huh. and uh, the reality is farmers are getting older. There is uh -huh. no one to no sustain, successor. no successor. 
and also the, for them to produce that amount that in those days there were there was not enough demand for it mm. we, there were there, there were not people were not so aware of the danger of pesticide uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, grains and all that so he was producing it but it was not enough to sustain so um yeah he decided that that's it you know he's getting old and he can't continue anymore so mm. he... the other one is this the sun-dried version noodles we have uh, a whole series the miswa the the wheat noodles the misoya as well as the brown rice noodles okay mm. brown rice mm. food. Yeah. okay i want to tell you a story about this one because okay. a lot of a lot of this food didn't come easy it didn't like happen overnight i know it's very easy to go to a supermarket and see the range of product and say like oh i decide i want to eat spaghetti today you know and it's I too easy That's, nowadays yeah, yeah it's, it's so too easy. easy to get food like you just go to supermarket okay i want this noodle okay i just pick but yeah. a lot of people are not aware like what's behind like what's the effort behind yeah so 20 years this. ago Mr. Gan, of course, the pioneers, the organic pioneers in, in, in the industry, Mr. Gan, um, he realized in the market there were not no organic. I mean, we talk about organic vegetables and all that kind of thing, but how about the condiments? How about, you know, how about food like this, noodles? You cannot find organic noodles. So he gave some organic unbleached flour and uh, salt and then to this, um, to this producer in Mlecker, he brought the whole you know, and told them that please make these noodles for me. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, um, they they were like, ah, you know, like the usual thing. Ah, are you sure? Ah, this ah, that, that, ah, you know, I have to change my system to cater to you and all and all that kind of thing. But, but they are now the largest organic noodles producer in Malaysia. Ah, so because of the uh, the, the the first intention of having this. And it yeah. become that factory become the uh, the largest uh, organic meat producer. Yeah, so and, it's a very good, good job. Of and it. and they still yeah, and they still insist on the old method. The reason why Mister Gan went to them is because they still sun dry the noodles. Mm. So you know when you sun dry, you actually absorb the energy of the sun. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is we are talking about. We are talking about the energy of food here. So all these, they still continue conventional. I mean, the faster way was be to put it in the oven and let it dry. But mm -hmm. the, this is still the old way, which is they dry in the sun. So in, when it's rainy days like this, uh, we, get, we, get, uh, we, get, uh, we get our salt because they need oh, longer they time. Need sun. Yeah. Uh, there's no sun. So, you know, so these things didn't come easy. <laughs> So that's why I'm saying here, it is, it's not easy. Everything that you have here is not easy. It really depends on the weather and it uses yeah. the energy of the sun. It's not using the energy from the oven. You save the electricity, okay? <laughs> yeah. Zero waste. <laughs> yeah, even with the dry grocery. Yeah. So thank okay. you, uh, thank you, uh, Ming, to explain about the veggie box and also dry grocery. So if let's say any of you from the audience who would like to subscribe with any of their uh, food, just go to their page, Community Eco Markets. Yeah, so I guess uh, we are reaching on our second part of our agenda. So if let's say any of you uh, from the floor who would like to ask some questions, you can already start to posting some questions so that after the end of the session, we will be trying to uh, 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 answer your questions, okay? So um, I guess uh, everyone is talking about MCO, so let's, talking, uh, let's talk about the whole... Um, pandemic periods and how CEM is actually tackling uh, against uh, unnecessary waste, especially during this MCO, right? Okay, so first of all, um, I guess because uh, from what I actually know and also learned from a lot of people saying that during this MCO period, a lot, a lot, a lot of producers started to switch their packaging to um, single-use packaging. So which is something that... Uh, we are quite curious about why CM, like why C, why CM still uh, continue with the reusable, uh, a reusable way model, and also how you actually engage with the customer. Is there any uh, problem when you uh, communicate with your customer when, uh, maybe some of them wanted to have vegetables that 
individually package. Yeah, could you share about that? Okay, um, I, I think we're very grateful to Facebook because um, I, 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 maybe because MCO, everybody is like at home, nothing to do, you know, kind of thing. So every, every time we post something, people are very responsive. We, we, uh, whatever message that we post on, as in like we say, hey, we are running short of um, re reusable bags. So uh, can you please donate some to us? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> I guess, um, and also through WhatsApp, when, whenever we place, when with customers who place order and then we kind of confirm and then we tell them, hey, do you have any uh, re reusable um, uh, woven bags or mm -hmm. um, shopping bags that we can reuse? Yeah. I think in the initial stage, we didn't expect, um, because Mr. Yap has have some stock you know, to, to, uh, to oh, reusable, bags, yeah. reusable, we started with that stock of reusable, but we mm -hmm. didn't, didn't expect, uh, it to be used up so fast. So then we had no choice, but we had to like start asking people. Um, yeah. So it's just by asking people on Facebook, on the customers that we go to, you know, and because that, that, that's the, that's the easiest way because the rangers will go meet the customers. So the mm -hmm. customers will pass the, the, the bags to us. Um, it only makes sense that we are using reusable bags because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I, I, I don't know, I don't know how, how we can continue with this same concept and say that we will use plastics after this, you know. So no long, it, it, it didn't, it never crossed our mind. Oh, it use. never crossed our mind to use like single use packaging during the MCO period. Never, never. It oh. was never in the discussion. It was more like, how can we get the recycle bags? Ah. It was always like, how can we get the recycle bags, you know? It's very surprised because I, I heard there are a lot of farmers been struggling because uh, some of their customers, uh, they actually request them. They want the vegetables to be packaged. Like they used to have, uh, have it like wrapped uh, in a rubber band, but right now because of customers demand, so they are switching back to the single-use packaging because um, maybe uh, some some concern about the uh, virus. But it never happened to your uh, case, is it? And is there uh, any concern? Rather, people oh, never yeah. vocally told us that uh, you should change and give us plastics, you know. Uh, I, 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 think, um, I think we were like pretty, we were like pretty clear that um, that we we were pretty clear that uh, we do not. Sorry, I'm getting a message here. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, I know, guys. I thought you know there'll be some message from HQ telling me to. <laughs> okay. To so about yeah, that. yeah. So so it was never a question, and uh, or rather, customers who did not uh, accept our concept, I guess um, they just kind of like never yeah, repeat. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. guess also uh, it's a type of misconception about uh, uh, whether switching back to the single-use packaging is better or we uh, or remain the same same. Uh, I mean, the same packaging method. I guess. Um, I guess, I mean, it's not necessary because uh, because like like what you say, it's it's also based on the level of trust with the uh, with the CSA farm and also I mean if you trust your farmers and your farmers it's also giving you a, a, a reliability on how they package into a reusable model I think there's not nothing to scare with if you also engage with your customer nicely yeah so I guess uh, we can also talk about um, the something maybe you would like to share about because uh, on some of the market shelf Ah, oh, I guess uh, we have some questions. Maybe we can answer some questions first. Uh, so Michael asked, is it delivered throughout the whole Malaysia? <laughs> I Sorry, think. just Clang Valley. Yeah. Valley. Okay. In, yeah, and even Clang yeah, Valley, Valley, we have restricted areas. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, and also, um, yeah, so if let's say anyone who wanted to subscribe the vegetable box, within Clang Valley, you could always drop them a message. So Aurora asks, many people say that plastic packaging is necessary for vegetables, especially organic vegetables. This is something that I notice on fridge, uh, not fridge, but supermarket. Yeah. Uh, whenever you, you, you go to an organic uh, vegetable shop. Yeah. So she would like to also ask that, like, can you share your view on this and what motivated CM to go plastic free for your vegetable box and what's the challenges? 
Okay, um, plastic packaging is necessary if you're putting on the shelf. But oh, the the cool cool yeah shelf. because it has to look pretty. Like I always say this, you know, you have to look pretty on the shelf because otherwise, then you will end up with a lot of uh, uh, unsold vegetables. But to us, the vegetables come from the farm. We pick it up. It goes into the cold room or the fridge or whatever. And then the next day when it's ready, then we pack it into the box and then you get it in your box or in the, in the paper bag. Mm. So uh, it's, it's not necessary to us because uh, this it only like interchange three hands and these people are just the packers and then you wash your vegetables and then cook them. And uh, you, 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 you basically get fresh vegetables. I think a lot of our people who, a lot of subscribers who has subscribed to vegetables, you can tell the difference in terms of the freshness. Are, are you saying that vegetables in plastics are fresher compared mm -hmm. to this? No, I mean, you be your judge. Our, custom, our customers are those that have been eating uh, supermarket vegetables and yeah. the vegetables in the box. You can tell which one is fresher, you know. So definitely, yeah. So to us, it never crossed our mind to go back to plastics. It's it's mm. never that intention. It's not going to happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, we have a few like we reuse the plastics, like some of the vegetables, like the uh, the tian qi ye mm. and the, the the tomatoes. We have to put it so that it doesn't get crushed and all that kind of thing. But you can send it back and then we reuse it again. Yeah. So that's our way of, uh, but we didn't create that plastic in the first place, okay? We are reusing them so that, you know, we, we find a way to use them. Mm. I guess it's, yeah. uh, I think like, yeah, I guess it's very important that uh, you mentioned about uh, the reason being why um, the vegetables is packaged on the market shelf. It has to be looked good so that people can choose it. Because if let's say, it has any spoilage, the cost behind organic vegetables is much more higher. So I believe the supermarket would not want to vary the cost. So they just wanted to package it nicely and to distribute. But in terms of like CM, um, because you already have the mindset of like plastic packaging is something that is not your value. So that's why you are choosing something that is uh, against, uh, not against, but that is something that is even better than plastic packaging, which is naked packaging that you are using with your bag. Yeah, and I think I saw some questions. Um, yeah, hi, can you talk about the pricing of the organic vegetables and how does the community set their price? Is there a standard for it to avoid overpricing? But I guess uh, CM has a one problem. It's because, uh, it is because, uh, because, is there any <laughs> Uh, there is some sort of like echo. Yeah, some background noise. Yeah, so I guess uh, this one I have some input uh, to pay for. Um, and what I understand, DM never increased their price since 10 years ago. Yeah, so I think you also asked a very good question. Um, Maybe me, you could explain on this. I actually want to talk about this thing. Thank you, okay. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this up. Yeah, CM never increased the price since 2012. And for you to, so it pains my heart. It pains in my heart when people tell me the vegetables are very expensive, okay? So for 30 or 33 ringgit of vegetables or even a 50 ringgit vegetables that you get in your box, if you market to market, I actually did a survey two years ago for, for presentation. Mm -hmm. Our vegetables are 30% cheaper than the market. The reason why? Why, why, why are we cheaper? Because we're getting the same vegetables. Why are we cheaper? Because we don't need to put in a supermarket shelf. We don't need to I store. Don't need to rent space. Yeah, I don't need to rent the space. I don't need to have a person every day going through supermarket to supermarket to make sure that they look pretty, tear off the animal. So there's a lot of work to maintain vegetables on the supermarket shelf. To us, we get the vegetables the next morning, um, before we pack, we check and then we trim the vegetables. Yeah. And but sometimes we get frost, we get frosted vegetables. And that is a loss to CM actually. Mm. You know? So he actually for perishables is a very high cost to him. And he has never increased the price. So I don't know how he can sustain himself. 
and which is why we cannot pay rangers to do delivery we cannot pay anyone else everyone has to be a volunteer there's no more margin you know for, from a 33 ringgit <laughs> weekly box you're getting a 30 ringgit box from a 55 ringgit big box for your whole family you're getting a 50 ringgit monthly subscription how much do you pay when you go out for a Starbucks for the entire family? When you go for an outing for the entire family, how much does it? Just one meal. This is one box for the entire week. Mm. So it pains my heart when people tell me the vegetables are very expensive. These mm. are And organic vegetables are only for the elite because it's too expensive, it's too out of market and all that. But look at these vegetables here. Go to the face. Go to our Facebook, look at the vegetables that you're getting. You're getting good quality vegetables. You're getting fresh vegetables and very delicious vegetables for those. Uh, I think someone mentioned, I saw it. Once you've tasted the vegetables, there's actually no turning back. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I have to warn you first. I have to give you this warning. There's no turning back because... Okay, we see the, how long <laughs> Arara can tahan. <laughs> Because the vegetables doesn't taste the same anymore. Yesterday we had a, a appreciation night to some of the, our very old, um, our very, very supportive pickup points. And this pickup point has been supporting Mr. Gan since um, 25 years ago. He's been eating, she's been eating organic vegetables. Mm -hmm. After, and those days people don't know about organic, 25 years ago, can you imagine? So Mr. Mm -hmm. Gan was like, um, so he was, she was like, oh, the your farmer, okay, I don't mind eating your vegetables and all that. You know? And after that, Mr. Farm got also disappointed with, you know, a lot of things like, you know, no one wants his vegetables and all that. And so there was a period he took, a, he took a sabbatical that he doesn't want to do farming anymore. So she had to eat outside vegetables. So then, then she knows, then at that point, she knows what's the difference between the vegetables that is from the farm and what's the vegetables on the outside. So that's, that's the thing. So um, the pricing, I, I, yeah, I can tell you pricing, um, uh, this, this Superman there, he's the, <laughs> he's, yeah. I always say his calculator or rather his abacus is out of order. So his calculation, <laughs> I don't know if it, we can sustain this anymore because there are a lot of costs involved. There are yeah, a lot so of maybe, high costs. Yeah. yeah. So, so maybe Pei Fang, um, we are not the a good person to ask about like how does the community set their price because, uh, <laughs> because we are underpriced. <laughs> yeah. So I guess uh, we try to answer your questions. Yeah. Um, I think also Zizini has some questions saying that uh, are there other players with similar models in Malaysia and who are the main uh I mean the main comp not to say competitors, but uh, what are the other uh, CSA models that are available in Peninsula Malaysia? Would you have I think some... there are many, 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 especially in recent years, there are many people who come up with the models and all of them with the same intention of supporting uh, the local farmers. So uh, they, they, they are just like slight differences. Some are more techni technical savvy. Some have apps where you can actually go into... Yeah. To, to support and all that. Um, but um, I would say if you want to look for one that's uh, truly zero or low waste, zero, mm -hmm. zero waste, about 90% zero waste, um, I, I, would, I would urge those uh, players to actually move into this direction mm -hmm. um, because we cannot have more than more of this. You know, we need more people to do the same stuff. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the intention of this session is also uh, to all the CSA, um, not to say competitors, but CSA firms around Peninsula Malaysia, if you ever listen to this uh, session, um, I guess you already know how a CM do it without unnecessary packaging. So if let's say they can do it since 2012, you also can do it as well. Because I guess it's some. It's, it's just a mindset behavior and also uh, um, the whole mindset change. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think the market is receptive to this anymore. Uh, it's already receptive to this. So people, you have to 
start communicating and educating. There is a lot of um, effort needed to educate and tell people that you're doing this model. And then, the, yeah. and we cannot go to Penang, we cannot send to Penang, Pahang, Johor, and all that kind of thing. Yeah. What, this, what you should do is establish your own community oh, in all these areas. Yeah. Because so that's why it calls community supported agriculture. Correct, you look correct. for your own uh, solutions at your own community and you start from there. Mm, correct, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I said, now I also cannot learn many non-organic vegetables have bitter taste. The thing is, CM Veggie Box is about the same as the price I paid at Pasa. So, all of you know, uh, the price that you pay at Pasa might be also the same price that you got for that you got uh, the Veggie Box from CM, which is totally 100% organic. Yeah, okay. Um, I guess we can go for one more questions if we have before we end the sessions. So if let's say there is no questions on the floor, I will actually go with our second last uh, question because uh, I think this is a very nice uh, uh, input that you can share about like uh, regarding to the dry groceries, right? Uh, I would say like um, you might be having some feedback about regarding the expiry date that uh, you see on the market shelf at the supermarket and what's yeah. the difference between uh when you uh when you when you provide the dry groceries at cm to your consumers yeah so we get questions like this uh what is your expiry date on your flour what's the expiry date of your noodles and all this kind of thing um actually in the beginning when i got this question i kind of like i got i i it kind of took me aback because I never thought about this, you know. I never thought about the expiry date. Yeah. But um, but the way how a refill program works, or rather a bulk store, like now we have a lot of zero waste and bulk store mm -hmm. and all that. I think all of us strive on the same concept. Mm -hmm. Other than reducing the plastics for each of them um, and, and by going bulk, you are also trying to, what we are trying to promote here is that um, buy the volume that you need for one or two months. Mm -hmm. Don't stock up. At, of course, uh, during MCO, I, I don't know. For me, I didn't feel any impact because I always have a little bit of everything in the shelf. So I, I, yeah. I, 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 it didn't, it, I didn't feel that impact. But buy the quantity that you need so that you can always get fresh uh, groceries. You can always get fresh dry goods. Um, because this is how it goes. Imagine we have a bulk packet of flour. Okay, uh, We have both unbleached flour and bread flour. Mm -hmm. If you have a packet of 25 kilo in a big gunny bag, yeah. if we have 25 families buying a kilo each, the we sold, we sold out. You sold out the entire batch of flour. Mm -hmm. And if you use this one kilo within one or two months, does it matter that the expiry is three years down the road? Yeah. So I guess right? this is a very, very important point that you shared with me earlier, saying that mm. um, the expiry date that mentions on the market shelf and how does it really affect when, people, when the consumer actually order the dry food from you and also ask for the expiry date. But I guess it's also the matter of how you actually distribute from the bigger packaging and also the matter of the consumer to actually buy the amount that they only need within that certain period of time and then they can stock, stock up afterwards after they finish it. And this, yeah. uh, by doing this, you are able to also reduce uh, any unnecessary food waste and also uh, any spoilage of food even. Yeah. The other, the other point to note is that these are organic produce so they don't contain preservative they don't contain fungicide they don't have sulfur you know to preserve them so yeah. it's not something for you to buy and stock up for one or two years you know mm -hmm. you need to consume them within one to two months the max yeah. is three months like noodles like this before the weevils will come but even if the weevils come what's the best thing that our, our, our grandmother did or my mother did in those days when we actually can see weevils in our rice? Did you notice Wait, that you don't... The sun. Yeah. <laughs> did you notice that you don't see weevils in rice anymore? Does it tell uh, you anything? Because uh, does it, it, uh, it's not 
it has some chemical pesticide, yes. you know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So I guess uh, we are almost uh, reaching the end of the session. So I would like to also uh, thank you everyone for joining this session. Um, the session won't be very, very uh, um, completed without any of you joining here. So maybe I can have Ming to give us some last advice um, regarding to any, any thoughts. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I wanted to end uh, maybe a parting statement. I hope the MCO has given us uh, some enlightenment as to our food uh, food system. Our, yeah, security, yeah, food insecurity. Food insecurity is actually true. It, it, it actually, uh, we are very vulnerable to shortage of food. Can you imagine yeah. if we are? But we were very... We are very thankful because with CEM and the level of understanding and communication with the farmers, uh, we actually didn't have any um, disruptive supply. Mm -hmm. So I hope this MCO period gives us a time where we actually um, we reflect, think yeah, we think about your food source, we think about your choices of food because um, a pandemic is when we are going out of nature. We are not living in harmony with nature. And there are many, many um, um, uh, factors why it happens. So um, I hope that this, the whole MCO thingy gives us a time to actually reflect and then decide what we are going to do forward, what we are going to do move forward. We're going to support more local food, support more local farmers, support mm -hmm. local programs, support ethical and safe food. Yeah, I think, yeah that's my most, personal commitment. Yeah. And I yes. think most importantly, that like what you mentioned, by actually supporting all these local farmers, we are able to... Uh, how to say to overcome the ins uh, the food food insecurity because by supporting local farmers they are able to uh, grow more food to the consumers and by growing more food to the local consumers means that we are not actually relying too much on the imported food. So the next okay. time when we have like pandemic or something like that, it's okay because we have our own local food supply chain. So I think this is a very very important message. Uh, to tell the consumer or to tell anyone of our friends and families by supporting local farmers, you are able to not relying too much on the outsource. Yeah, and we will be uh, safer and maybe by doing uh, a little bit more from our part to support uh, businesses like CEM. Uh, that a bit. <laughs> a bit. Yeah. 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 Also, you can try to start grow your own food. So there are a lot yes. of ways to really... Uh, I mean, to tackle the insecurity of the food source. And also, very, very important point from my perspective of view is that um, if, let's say, sometimes, if, let's say, uh, this Monday, when you go to supermarket or when you go to Pasatani, you wanted to buy a fruit, but the fruit is not available, it's out of stock, it's totally normal because the food is simply not... Uh, not growing according to the seasons so if let's say something that is not growing in the season you can't find it it's all right because you will be able to find something that is grow according to the season so just go, go with the flow and to understand uh where's your food come from and always support something that is grow locally and also based on the season because that the case uh, if let's say that's the case you are able to reduce the overall carbon footprint yeah and live a better life very cheesy but yeah so uh, thank you once again, Ming, for joining us for this live stream. And also, uh, I, be, I hope that uh, all these sessions are able to give you some input about organic produce and also the whole uh, local food supply chain. So if, let's say, any of you who are very interested, do follow um, Community Eco Market on Facebook page. PM them for more information. And uh, we will be having our last week of community live stream next week because it's the end of uh, it's not the end it's it's <laughs> almost end of the end of the month so uh if let's say uh you would like us to continue more of this kind of uh, live stream do also let us know so that we are knowing some 
comments suggestion from you all right so we will see you on our next live stream um next uh, this coming week yeah thank you so much and thank you ming once again for joining us and nice. thank you our volunteer back end sabrina sabrina thank you do all the back end here and thank you all of you have a great night and selamat hari raya yeah selamat hari raya thank you zero waste for the bye-bye yeah. <laughs> <Super lagi. laughs> okay. bye